here we are once again with Muki Tenenbaum. We are, as you know, exploring through these videos his disillusionist philosophy and especially trying to make sense of the misalgic theory at the core of this philosophical system, which explains human behavior as an aversion to suffering. And as part of this exercise, for years now, month after month, we've been trying to illustrate, to apply this rather abstract concept to facts from everyday life. We at times even covered the news, so to speak, we discussed the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the war in the Ukraine. Today, we are going to dwell into a topic that is connected to war as such, but goes far beyond that. And it's the difference, I would say, between ethical behavior, between what we do in accordance with value, with moral values, and our empathy, the feeling of empathy we get one in front of the others. So we are going to take the disillusionist view of these topics, ethics and empathy, and see where it leads us. Well, um, we, have, we have to differentiate first to, to be able to, to know what are we going to talk about. We need mm -hmm. to first clear the board from things that can confuse us and can confuse the issue. There are two things we are not going to talk about. I repeat, we are not. not it's not that we mm -hmm. are going to talk about, we are not. The first one is the law. Three. Why, why, why the law? Uh, for, for different reasons. First of all, the law sometimes and many times goes together with uh, our ethical and moral values. In general, you can say that law represents the average mm. or, or, or to represent the average of those, uh, of, of, of those moral values. But I don't see a moral value in the color of a sign on your storefront or the time of opening, if you can open it at 11 on, on a Sunday or at nine o'clock in a Monday. So, mm. and that all can, can be in the law. The second difference with the law, which it has to do with the way it's, it's presented. An ethical value is absolute. It says you cannot kill people unless, of course, somebody is going to try to kill you. And there is even a discussion depending on who's, who are we talking. If it's Gandhi, he would say you can never kill anybody. And then there is other who will say, who will say just, just if, you, if, if he's an enemy, kill him. There are different values on this. Uh, uh, but it is clear and clear cut. This is, those are the rules. What happens afterwards? It doesn't say. The law is different. The law says, it doesn't say you cannot kill somebody. Of course, you can kill anybody you want. But in that case, either we will execute it or go to prison for life if we catch you. And then if we catch you, yes, uh, there, there are several mm -hmm. different things that has to do with the law. So it's different, different in its, in its way, to its function, even though we can sometimes confuse. Who else is going to be outside of, of, the, of, the, of this, the perimeter in, in, of our mm -hmm. discussion? The, the psychopaths. Now, may I, may I remind everybody who is interested in the issue of psychopaths, please go to, there is a video uh, a few months ago, it's called How Psychopaths Think. So it's, it's an interesting uh, video that will deal with that issue. We are not going to speak now about psychopaths, but why we are not going to speak about psychopaths? Because psychopaths lack three things. They like empathy, they like sentiments, emotions, and they like a moral compass. They like they, 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 they don't have guilt, they don't feel guilt, okay? So those three things make them out of the issue because when we're talking about ethics and we were talking about morals and we're going to talk also about empathy, this has nothing to do with them. That doesn't mean they don't follow those rules sometimes. Of course, if it's public, if, if what they're going mm -hmm. to do is uh, it's something that the public will know that it's something unethical, two things can happen. One, they may be subjected to a collective kind of, uh, of uh, uh, shame or, or uh, you know, be, being shamed, shame, uh, that will be probably, and this, the most important one for them is that they will be discovered as psychopaths, in which case they're out of, uh, they're out of business, they, they, of the social business, of course, I mean. So, so these two things may make psychopaths follow certain rules, but they are really not follow that rules, they follow their own interests. Uh, but in, in, in the fact will be the same thing. So we are not going to talk about psychopaths. Now, uh, what we are going to talk about is, at the beginning, the difference between empathy and morals. And, mm -hmm. uh, and in the, in this issue, Florencio 
the first thing we have to know is that uh, when we're talking about em empathy is a sentiment. Morals no. is a code. Morals is in is there uh, uh, in what we call reasoning, which which in fact it's not. It goes it goes into our habits. We have an habitual moral way of behaving. Yes, the, uh, be, before others and, and and by ourselves when we are ourselves. The guard for others. We already said it's shame if you don't do it. If if you violate any of the rules, and the inner inner guard is your guilt. Yes? So you you are being outflanked from both sides, so you will follow those, those rules. Empathy is emerging. It's a, something that emerges, mm. something that happens mm. when you just suddenly feel empathy. Now, the, the difference between two, I will go on, but first I want to hear your opinion. No, no, I, I get the idea perfectly, leaving aside legal punishment, leaving aside psychopath that will, in all probability, not behave this way, when the rest of us behave, let's say, in a proper manner, we still don't know if we are behaving that way because we are following a moral code or just because we have felt empathy in that particular situation. Uh, as you were speaking, I realized I see someone helping others in the street. I still don't know if it's just a good Christian that has in a code, as you say, in a very abstract layer, the notion that he has to help others, or if it's someone that has no such code, not such value, but in this particular situation felt in a way empathic and decided and was prompted to help the other. You mentioned also guilt and shame, which I feel are part of this equation. Well, I'm especially interested in how to distinguish, how, how to tell apart ethical behavior and ethical motivation from an empathical motivation when we observe behavior. And maybe in some instances, different from the one I have just described, you can have both of them colliding, right? You could have a moral code and empathy going against those abstract principles. I think that's also an interesting scenario to analyze. Uh, yes, and, and I, let, me, let me use an historical uh, example to explain the difference between empathy and a moral mm. code. When, when, first of all, they tend to collide sometimes. And in the case, the, the, the emblematic case is Nazi, Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany had a set of very, very strict moral codes. If you think that the, 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 the Nazis were immoral, mm. that, that's, that's absolutely not right. They don't have the same morality as you have, as I have, but they do have a moral set of code in which everybody, they, they should uh, help, uh, they, they was uh, helping, helping your neighbor, they was respecting your elders, everything. But that only includes the Aryan nation, the, Ar the Aryan race. The rest are not included in that model. Like we don't include animals, unless you're oh. a vegan. Uh, or, mm. Yes, you, I, I eat a cow. Yes, and I, I, I really participate in, in, in somewhere in the process of killing an animal so I can eat it. Yes, or, 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 or fur, or having a fur, uh. it, it doesn't matter. Yes, why? Because they have no consciousness and we have made the division at humans. That's where we put the division. Vegans do that and include some animals, not all of them, yes? They only include insects, for example. Some of them, some religions like the Jainis try to include even insects. They even, you know, they put a, a mask on their face. So when they clean the little things they don't see, they will not eat it by, by mistake. So you do have different kinds of models. The Germans put it at, at the... <laughs> In the in the uh, in the uh, area of uh, where differentiate between the German people or or the Aryan the Aryan people and the rest, the Jews were the, the, defined as enemies of the state, and it was like killing rats. Nobody, mm -hmm. and I know it's against <laughs> killing rats or, or of course vegans may they may be regular, but in general killing rat is a vermin and you try to kill it. That's how the Germans prepared the Jews. And so why you don't feel empathy for a rat? 
it's very hard to feel empathy for a rat, especially because we know about rats. They told us about rats. The same thing happened with, uh, with the Jews. They were like rats. They were outside of the, of the area of ethics. And the most important thing is that they will not feel empathy about it. Now, how do they cancel empathy? They say, listen, I know it's empathic. You, you will have feeling of empathy, but you have to overcome it. The, the best example is Himmler, the number two in the, or number three in the German, in the, in, the, in the Nazi Germany, he was the head of the SS. And he spoke to the SS officers telling exactly those things. And, and this, there is a recording of him saying it. He says, listen, every German has a Jew he likes. Every German says, he's the exception. You see, if we do that, we'll never get rid of the Jews. You have to overcome your empathy, not not, not have it. He, he didn't say don't have empathy because you cannot order somebody not to feel something. So he understood that very well. He says, you have to overcome it. Yes, It's like, you know, you, you have to be strong and do it. Yes, and, 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 and following a moral code, which is higher than your empathy. Mm -hmm. That was the system and that was the whole idea. That's where empathy and and this not only happens in the nazi germany in a war mm -hmm. you don't kill people unless unless you're in a war now what changed how is it that you don't feel empathy for the soldier in front of you the answer is two two folds one when it's far you don't ah. see him so you don't feel empathy that's number one and number two because you are being ordered that there is something more important you have to defend your home your your country. And this goes well for Russia and for the Ukraine. It's, it's good because we have a war. It happens in both sides, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Is there empathy? I'm sure there is. Are there no. empathic uh, done? I'm sure there are Russian soldiers and Ukrainian soldiers doing empathic things, but that's not going to be the majority. It's going to be the minority because you are in a war. Uh, in general, will you, will you say to the Americans not to kill Nazis during the war? Yes. <laughs> uh, it, 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 you, you see, the, the, the issues are there. Empathy is personal, is, is me. Ethics uh, is the public, the general. Please go ahead. No, 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 I, I was going in this direction because you played the numbers there. Like the majority of the cases go with the moral code. A minority dwells into the empathical feelings. And I get this collective large sets of people go for ethical and moral, then individuals get to feel empathy. But I wanted to ask you about this distinction in the usual numbers we play with in this illusionism, which is the 95%, the huge amount of time that we spend sleepwalking. And those 5% few moments in which we are awake, I think this also would be interesting to introduce in this comparison, right? First to everybody, to remind everybody, sleepwalking means that line of habits that we run all day. It's about 5% of the time, not all together, but in little awakenings in which mm -hmm. we are not sleepwalking. An example is empathy. Empathy will always wake you up. Ethics, on the other hand, will not wake you up. Ethics is inside of your sleepwalking. You are already sleepwalking, not stealing, not killing, not raping, and many other things we don't do on ethical stuff, yes? Uh, if you see somebody that uh, tries to go in and cannot open the door, you will open the door. That they will call it manners. This is, this is exactly what they're talking about. It, this is automatic. This goes into the automatic part. Why? Remember, you, you, this is something that you have to have it everywhere. So it has to be automatic and it has to be contagious. Uh, Empathy is not contagious. Ethics is. Ethical uh, behavior is. Not because you are following an ethics and I will do as ethical as he did. No, no. If he does that, I will do that. Since it's ethical, his behavior, mine will be ethical by itself. It's not a, an election ethics. Ethics is something that is already ingrained in the way we, we sleepwalk. And ethics, of course, as I say, change. Ethics among uh, honor among thieves, yes. Ethics uh, mm. in, in the criminal world. That is, there are ethical rules. We just don't, sure. we, we just don't share them. Uh, so these are the this the, this is the issue. Sleepwalking is, is, is uh, uh, in sleepwalking. We get ethics. We never get empathy. Empathy mm. wakes us up from that 
once we have uh, felt empathy, we did something or nothing about it, then we go back to our sleepwalk. Now, be careful because empathy can become, um, um, can lose its sharpness the way mm -hmm. it wakes us up. Yes. So the first time you see a little child, poor uh, people who go to Morocco or to some of those third world countries and, and visit those places, the first time they see somebody very poor they didn't see or a child running to sell them something, empathy will, trigger, will be triggered. The second, the third, and then the rule of three will come into play, the, the disillusionism rule of three. The first time is an exception. The second one is a coincidence. The third one is a tradition. So it goes inside and it becomes part of your sleepwalk to give the money or not to give the money. Hmm. We're almost out of time already, but listening to you, I realize, of course, ethics have the advantage of gregariousness. They have the advantage of, I would say, energy savings, right? Because you can go along with these movements while you sleepwalk. But for all the situations we are analyzing, it seems we are better off, we might be better off with empathic people around us than with ethical people. And I'm not talking only about the Nazis and enemy soldiers. But leaving aside psychopaths, as you did in the beginning, leaving aside psychopath, maybe if we had to choose, I think I would go for someone feeling empathy towards me and not someone enacting a moral code when he interacts with me. Well, yes, absolutely. Families really work may much on empathy. It's very simple. A mother that, that, that she see her child crying or mm. hears her, her child crying will take care of the child for many reasons. One could be shame because others will sing. Other will be ethics because that's what she's supposed to do. Sometimes because she loves the child, which is something very, very diffuse. But most importantly is because it feels empathy towards her child. So empathy is a personal thing. It's, it's close. It's very hard. Now, when you ask for empathy beyond that, that's an illusion. That's, that's typical, that's typical so, social engineering, yes? You should feel empathy for the people who do not have... Uh, and nothing to eat uh, in Africa. You don't know them. You never heard about them. So forth. Of course, ethics may give you. You may give money, and sometimes it may happen that if you see it on television, you get empathy. Not only that, empathy is a way to hack people. This is very mm. important. We we are being hacked. Of course, you are being hacked through the moral code. Of course, you are being hacked uh, through the law. Yes, uh, to make. And then there is the last hack: is the empathy hack. How it works? You know, some people. Will, will say, ah, the pain is very bad. It's very common to see sometimes on, when you are in the traffic lights, even in the US, people coming and, and trying to uh, raise your empathy out of it. Or a phone call saying, sir, you have to save a child in Africa for $5 a day. You will be a hero and you will be saving a child. And they send you a picture of a child. Of course, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's fraud. So, so empathy is, is a door that can open. But the most interesting thing about empathy, and I believe, is that it is personal. That mm. is, uh, and uh, so I, I may know what are your ethic rules. Probably I will, because we live really in the same society, in the same class. I would know most of your ethical rules. It would be surprising that I will not know them. I will know what are the laws that, that, that makes you tick, and I will know how you will going to behave. What I will never know is when mm. and how you feel empathy. Of course, people have a, a common empathy feelings yes you see a little a little child crying probably will trigger the empathy of most of everybody of yes now then it, it may change there are some people who feel empathy for 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 an animal we don't we eat them yes uh, what i mean we don't is me and you yes not we uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, so so it's 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 very personal and any intent to make it bigger it's mm -hmm. it's really it goes again into morals and, 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 and we, oh. we lost that feeling. It's a feeling. That's a, it's an interesting take to, to see it in terms of scale, right? But we are out of time already. I don't know if you have some last remarks you want to introduce. No, I'm sure no. this will come back in future videos. N nothing. The only thing is that, that uh, you ask the question and I never really answer the answer. Yes, I would prefer people who are empathic around me. And in Germany, imagine there would have been no Holocaust. If, the, if empathy would have, would, have, uh, would have ruled. 
Even the Pope uh, at the time, uh, Pius XII, did not feel empathy because they were yeah. not close to him uh, for the Jews in general. He didn't do anything for them. But he saved personally mm -hmm. some of the Jews of Rome. He knew he met. So yeah. his empathy and his moral code were one yeah. against the other. Nice. Very well. See you in the next one. Thank you, Mugi. <laughs> My pleasure. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, comment and subscribe.